Hello and welcome to another episode of Adventures in .net. I'm Sean Claybo, your host, and with me today, Mark Miller. Hey, Mark. Sean, how are you doing, buddy? Hey, how, how do you, what do you think? You want to co-host this with me today? I thought I would just, you know, sit on the on the sidelines over there, but yeah, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm totally psyched, Sean. <laughs> let's do it. Great. All right, bring on our guests. Uh, let's welcome uh, Jackson. And I forgot what your last name was. What is Jackson? John Huff, H-U-F-F. -F. So people oh. get that uh, messed up all the time. So I have to spell it out. That's the same thing with my my last name. I don't even pronounce it anymore. I just spell it and they still misspell it. So, wow. I just say C-L-A-B-O-U-G-H and somehow they put a Y in there. So <laughs> that's weird. Where would they get Where would they even get a Y from? Uh, they just because the alphabet, man. Have, it's I right near the end. I would understand it if I pronounce it because I say Claybo, but that's why I don't even say it anymore. I just say C L A B O U G H, and I, that somehow they just C L A always follows by a Y. I guess to to most people. So, Sean, <laughs> I'm sending you a virtual hug, buddy. Yeah, it's five de yeah. I don't five think degrees. you've ever had that problem, Mark. Um, no, I haven't. <laughs> I, in fact, sometimes I'm like, if I'm like in the past when I've got gone for a website, I've looked at it both from the standpoint of, of, of being able to spell it only one way from visually how it, how it, you might look and, and also a phonetic, uh, disambig, disambiguity, ambiguity as well. Right. So what can we get something? Can we get something that's both phonetically disambiguous and also, <laughs> uh effortless to spell right and that's what you need in your last name my friend exactly it's so hard to get right <laughs> now jackson's got a good oh that's a first name not a last name oh at least that part works yeah everybody knows jackson yeah there's really only one way to do that i think sean did i just blow it as a co-host should we <laughs> Should we should we introduce our our guest? Yeah, well, I mean, it just kind of got me thought, thinking about how many different spellings of Sean that I've seen out in the, out in the world. So. <laughs> That's where you were. I'm yeah. looking at you, and I'm like, oh, he's not with us anymore. Yeah, no, because I, I went to school, grade school, junior high, high school with a girl. She spelled her name. It was Sean, but it was S J A N. Oh, so wow. it's the only person I've ever met that spelled it that way. So if she's listening, she probably knows who she is. <laughs> oh, yeah. Somebody at the university I'm going to uh, has named S-H-A-A-N. Kind of like spelled in an Indian way. Right. Yeah. All right, Jackson. I don't, I don't think our topic for today is talking about names and phonetics and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I think we're talking about some project that you're working on or they're started uh, called the Clipboard Project. Why don't you tell us about that? All right. So let me tell you the history of the Clipboard Project. So tune back way back to when uh, the COVID-19 virus hit us, or the world to be exact. So it was mid-2020. Uh, we were just sitting at home, not doing much. We were still going to the store because that was still open. And like at near the end of 2020, a uh, couple restaurants started opening up because they felt confident enough that the virus wouldn't spread there. Well, while we were there, my family and I, uh, at the time I was really into Minecraft servers and I was just kind of daydreaming while we were waiting for our food. And what I, <clears throat> uh, I really wanted to make this project to kind of start my Minecraft server automatically. And I wanted to name it something cool because I wanted to differentiate it from the standard startup scripts that most other people were already using because startup scripts are kind of boring. They do nothing and they're actually kind of hard to use, ironically enough. Well, at the time, I also just got started doing judo. Well, actually, I got started doing judo right before COVID hit. So I already knew some of the, the terms we use. Do you know what judo is? Just making sure. I know uh, what judo is. Yeah. It's like karate chop. That's what I say when I do judo. <laughs> kind of. It's like karate where you throw people. Right. It's yeah. It's like wrestling is what it is. And you use their their effort and momentum 
against them, to keep them going in that direction past you. Exactly. So and when we're doing rounds, there's this term in Japanese called hajime. And what it literally means is start. And so we say hajime, or the sensei says it, says it whenever we do like training rounds in the gym. Well, I thought for a startup script for Minecraft, Hajime is a really cool name, I thought. So I call this project Hajime, and I, I wanted to write in C++. Now, can either of you maybe guess why I wanted to use C++? Uh, I think you wanted to be able to have it run on multiple platforms. Is that true? Was that, that a good guess? True. Yes. And you wanted low level access. Low level access because there were, I was planning to add some really advanced features in the future. And I just wanted to make sure I could do that because C++, it can do pretty much everything from C and a bunch of other stuff, as you might already know. But the real reason I use C++ in addition to uh, like full compatibility and cross platform support is because way back in 2012, my uh, parents and I were, took a trip to Barnes and Noble. Do you still know Barnes and Noble? Oh yeah. Yeah, there's, there's only a few of them left. Well, we went to a Barnes and Noble and we were looking at a few different sections. I noticed there was this programming book section and I just looked around for the thickest book I could find because uh, I knew nothing about programming and that was the absolute best metric I knew I had to know if a book was good or not. And the thickest book there was this interesting one called C++ Primer, updated to the C++ 11 standard. Now, I didn't notice then, but it turns out that book is one of the best on C++. So I opened it, started reading the first section, and I fell in love with it. It looked like the coolest thing ever. So I told my mom, hey, I really want this book. And so she said, oh, we can get it for you. So we got it, I took it, the book home started reading C++ Primer, almost cover to cover. I thought it was the coolest book ever. And I learned a lot of C++ then, but I tried setting it up on my little laptop I, I got around then, but I didn't, knew, I didn't know much about computers back then. So I, I kind of got nowhere, but I did know how to write C++. So I used that, I, so in 2020, I was thinking about Hajime, and I realized, hmm, I have this book on C++ and I learned a lot from it. Hey, I'm actually pretty familiar with C++ now. So I decided because I already knew C++, why not save some time and just use that? And it just so happens to be cross-platform compatible and super fast and all the other advantages it had. Now, <clears throat> now regarding Rust, I, I heard about Rust around the same time and I, I looked some example code using it. And it just, it looked really ugly compared to C++, even though it's technically somewhat similar. I just thought it was really ugly. and I didn't want to relearn something totally new. So I decided it'd be cheaper overall to use C++. And so uh, fast forward a couple of years, I'm now going to the University of Central Florida. Uh, and I'm sitting in my physics class I'm on my laptop taking a few notes when I realize I'm sick and tired of working on Hajime. Uh, <laughs> and in case you don't already know, the kind of demographics of Minecraft server users is not the best. There, there's a lot of kids who don't know much about servers, but they do know about Hajime. And uh, on the Minecraft server community discords, where there's not so many kids and a lot of uh, kind of, I don't know how to describe them, turbo nerds, uh, they love to bike shit Hajime. Like they keep nitpicking little things, saying it's never going to work and saying I should rewrite it in Rust. So I just kind of ignored them. But eventually I kind of got tired of Hajime because I added some really advanced features. In fact, the most advanced feature I added uh, uses some really obscure Linux, no, POSIX terminal, uh, like sys, sys, <clears throat> it uses some obscure syscalls. And I worked, that, worked on that one Christmas Day, 2021. Yeah, that's hilarious. Cool. 
I, I, I can I could probably say that I'm probably not the demographic of uh, most Minecraft server operators, you know. Yeah. Good. So that super advanced feature just kind of drained me doing it on Christmas Day. So I was sitting in physics, thinking about, oh, I, already, I did this stuff on Christmas Day. What more is there to add? And I realized there was so much more to add to Hodgemy. I couldn't conceivably do it on my own. And unfortunately, maybe because I wrote it in C++, almost nobody else contributed to it. Even though there were tons of users, nobody was interested in adding stuff because of a demographic mismatch. Right. I thought, hmm, is there some gaping hole in the command line interface world, because I know how powerful CLI is compared to a lot of GUIs, and I love writing my own little scripts, but it seems like only a lot of technical people know how to use it. So what if I made something that would be easy for non-technical people to use? And I also found, hmm, I'm copying stuff a lot. Uh, why don't I make something that interferes with the clipboard? So the first thing I checked, to not repeat the same mistake with Hajime is to see if something already existed. And turns out, I did a search for Linux clipboard CLI or Windows clipboard, and I found absolutely nada. Uh, there are people on Stack Overflow asking, hmm, how do I access the clipboard? And the answers weren't very helpful. So I decided, why not make the best clipboard manager out there for all the common command line platforms? It works the same everywhere, super easy to use, super fast, has all the clipboard features you could possibly want. And so uh, to, mm, that is a lot of goals, you might say. Or this project would be a shining gem of perfection, because I'm a real perfectionist. And what was I going to call it? Hmm. I already had a cool Japanese term, hajime for the Hajime project, but I had nothing similar for the clipboard project. So what if I just called it clipboard? Now, uh, the reason I call it the clipboard project now is because clipboard is in fact really generic and it's a, it's a more common word than you may think. So people are getting confused about just clipboard. So I call it the clipboard project, or if you don't wanna say all of that, just say CV, which is how you invoke it in the term. So, the clipboard project was born. And because I already learned a lot of C++ in action doing Hajime, it would be, it would be more suitable to use C++ here than for Hajime. And considering demographics for command line clipboard manager are probably different from Minecraft servers, I thought maybe more people could contribute to this. And so uh, that's why I use C++ for a clipboard project, why I named it that way, and how it got started. Nice. So, so what, are the, what are some of the main features of the, the clipboard project that you, you thought were missing or weren't available in other clipboards or just a generic clipboard? So when I first started, I had I just wanted to add the bare minimum features because I actually didn't know about existing utilities like Windows's Clip, uh, XClip, WL Clipboard, PD Copy for Mac OS, or any of the others. Sorry. So I just wanted to do something. And I didn't, I didn't know much about X11, Wayland, Windows, and Mac OS. So, well, I didn't want to integrate with those clipboard APIs because I looked up how to use them and they seemed super duper fussy, to say the least. So what I did is I made I made my own bespoke clipboard kind of storage system where everything is a file kind of like the Unix philosophy. So with the clipboard project, everything literally is a file. Like the top level directory is all your clipboards, then subdirectory, individual clipboards, then data, metadata, and then data, all the entries, and then all the content in each entry. All those are folders, human readable. And I love that because it seems like so few tools make have everything just as flat files in a human readable way. And the best part is it works exactly the same everywhere, because recently, in the C++ 17 standard, they added this cool thing called the File System API. And what it does is it lets you basically use the file system effortlessly. And it really is effortless. You just have to use, yeah, it really is effortless. And that 
is kind of why the clipboard project exists because a lot of other languages don't have anything similar or if they do it's like some fussy library so i suppose without the file system api there would be no clipboard project but you might be wondering uh, why not just integrate with these existing standards and not make up a new one and just stay in line with everything else. So also in 2022, uh, taking the AP Spanish Language and Culture exam in May, so I could uh, get that college credit. And what I noticed during the test, one of the questions asked about uh, what, say what music band were they talking about in this so-and-so recording? One of the options What is this weird option called Aventura. And I thought, oh, that sounds really cool. And I thought that's what they mentioned. Well, I probably didn't get that question right after the fact. But I remember Aventura, hmm, it just sat in the back of my mind for months. And when I was doing, hmm, well, around the time when I was starting UCF, I decided to look up Aventura and found it was the coolest band ever. So have, it, have either of you heard of Aventura? I have not. No, no, I haven't either. I'm okay. a Rush fan. <laughs> so what Aventura is, is this boy band from the Bronx that got started in, like in the early 2000s. And what they realized is this genre of music called bachata. And what bachata is, is this kind of uh, rock and rolly type music from the Dominican Republic, except with a few technical differences. What Aventura realized is that bachata music has gotten, had gotten really stale leading up to the 2000s. And so they want to break the rules and kind of Americanize it and make it cool again. And so they did that and they made this album called We Broke the Rules in 2002. And it was like a mega hit across, uh, I believe Europe and a lot of Latin America and not so much the US. But it was surprisingly popular in Europe and specifically Greece. Like bachata is a really hot thing over there. And I was listening to this music, and I realized just how good it was. And so I thought, hmm, if Aventura can break the rules and do so well, I can break the rules with the clipboard system as well. No, you can't, Jackson. Don't try it. It's too dangerous. <laughs> That's what I would have said. I would have yeah. said, no, you can't do that. It's just crazy. It's crazy talk. It won't work out. So I tried breaking the rules and I, at first, I just added the bare minimum to the clipboard project in case breaking the rules wouldn't work out. But what I, what I realized is that this flat file system worked so well because of the C++ API that I could just use it everywhere and just extend it as infinitely as much as I wanted. Jackson, to be clear, when you say breaking the rules, are you saying we're putting everything in the file system? Yes. Is that correct? Okay. I, I also researched a couple other GUI clipboard managers, and they had a few issues, like a limited number of entries. So, for example, take CopyQ. It's pretty, it works everywhere. It's a GUI clipboard manager. It's been around forever, but it only lets you store 999 entries. Well, in GitHub issues, there is one issue in particular where a bunch of people are complaining. I can't store more than 999 entries. Could you possibly send this? And the creator says, nope, because everything is stored in memory, it would take up too much memory. Well, little did he know that storing everything in the file system completely bypasses that limitation. And so we can store in, uh, basically infinite entries. And on, the, uh, on some recent versions of the clipboard project, I've tested it up to about 100,000 entries working in about one second. Like it can display a hundred thousand in one second. That's C plus plus for you. Yeah, I don't really get that guy's argument there because you know nine hundred ninety nine items. You know what? What are the size of the items? You know, exactly. it could be small right. items, and that's not much memory. But huge items will take up tons of memory. Just... Yeah. Also, you add one more item. It's 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 a little crazy to say. Okay, I'm going to stop at ninety nine ninety nine. I guess maybe the que the question must have been, let's make it unlimited, I'm thinking now. Can you just make it unlimited? And that's why he was pushing back, probably. Yeah, He's gonna saying it's got to be a some reasonable limit. Okay. They were asking, could you possibly put this in, a, say, an SQLite file so we can export it? 
And the creator says, oh, that would be too difficult to do. It would be like a rewrite. And it may be true because he used the Qt uh, clipboard API, which, uh, do you know what Qt is? Qt, right? Is that right? Yeah. yeah. I know a little bit about it. Yeah, so you're basically bound to whatever Qt has, which right. apparently is pretty limited. So I was going to absolutely make sure the clipboard project would not have any of these uh, common problems of other clipboard managers. And mm, it's been a long road since then. So let me re read to you all of the actions you can do right now. You can cut, copy, and paste, but you can also clear clipboard, show it, edit it, add item, remove items, add a custom metadata note, swap contents, show the status of clipboard, show detailed info, uh, copy a clipboard into another, import your export clipboards, export your clipboards, show the clipboard history, ignore certain patterns, search clipboard's contents, and then show the configuration of the clipboard project. And that is kind of an, an anal in a jet, uh, that's kind of analogous to what the GUIs offer, all in a CLI. And today, I have seen nothing else that comes even close to this. Like on GitHub, there are a few, I, I sometimes see these new CLI clipboard managers, <clears throat> but they always just die out after a few commits and they always have some weird limitation, like a limited number of items or they're really slow. It's just there's nothing, nothing else even close. Jackson, I got a question for you. Um, I, I may have missed it. I was listening. I was listening and thinking about what you were saying, and I may have missed it during this. But do you have the ability to filter, like text filter out? So if I can show like a hundred thousand items, can I filter and show only the items that have the word sailboat in them, for example, or something like that? So you can do exactly that because I'm, I designed Clipboard Project to be extremely scriptable. And following the Unix philosophy, it does everything a clipboard manager does, but almost nothing more. And it has a little feature that you might not be able to see if you're just using it interactively as a JSON output. So if you're piping it into something else, it'll automatically do JSON. And what you can do with that is use something like JQ to filter out the JSON to find anything that mentions, say, sailboat, like you said. So it can be done. It's interesting, it's just occurred to me that I could take the output of the clipboard list that shows me everything on the clipboard and send that to a clipboard entry on the clipboard. Couldn't I? Yeah, you can do whatever you want. Okay, next, second question. Is there an ability to lock a particular clipboard entry or are they effectively always locked? In other words, if I add something new, does everything kind of shift or does it just take the next open slot? Uh, what happens? Is there any recycling that happens, I guess is my question. Do I have any slot recycling that's happening? So what happens when you add it, uh, when you copy something, is it just appends it to the entry list? So say if you copy uh, foobar and then you copy baz, entry zero will be foobar then one baz. And uh, any new entries don't affect any previous entries unless you've set a custom history limit. Sorry, kind of like those other GUI clipboard managers. Okay, so I, I set a limit and I copy something to the clipboard. Does that mean my oldest entry goes away? Exactly. And can exactly. I, and if I set a limit, can I now lock some of those entries so they never go away? Is my question. Hmm. Almost I like pinned. Yeah, like pinned. In other words, I'm thinking maybe there's things I want to bring up all the time and I want to be able to just bring up the list and then hit a number, for example, and then spit out, paste out that thing that's in there. I'm imagining so that space. It does not do that. So entries are just treated the same as any other. However, you can do something very similar with something called persistent clipboards. So another feature of the clipboard project is unlimited different clipboards you can use. And by default, it links the, uh, the zero clipboard with the system clipboard, like say X11, Wayland, Mac OS, Windows. But the other ones don't have such a link. So what you can do is just feed the output of any entry in any clipboard and into any different clipboard and it'll automatically create it. And if it's a persistent clipboard, it'll stick around forever until you delete it. 
Nice. And if it's not persistent, it goes away when the command line window closes. Is that when it goes away? Or does it go away when the machine shuts down? So non-persistent ones uh, just go away when the machine shuts down. When the machine shuts down. OK. Interesting. And if you, by default, the default clipboard is not persistent. So it'll go away when you shut your machine down. But you can uh, use a regex to make that persistent. You also said there's a way to link the clipboard project engine, I guess, if I could call it that, to the actual system clipboard. Is that right? Did I hear that correctly? Oh, yeah. So that is one of, one of the, uh, the hardest features to add because you have to convert this uh, flat file system into whatever the system clipboard can handle. And because each different common OS is like the, its own bespoke fussy thing, I uh, spent a lot of time and the help of one other person working on that. So when I first shared the clipboard project on a couple like coding sites, people were asking, oh, does it integrate with the system clipboard? And I had to say, no, but we're working on that. Well, I got started on X11 a little bit until someone added, uh, just sent in a PR to add a complete X11 support right away. And I thought, oh, that's so cool. And this person seems to be like a game developer, for C++. Because that's like the, like the most common profession for that language. So his code was pretty good. And so I, I looked over it. It, looked, it did look good. So I, I merged it. And now we had X11 support. But there was a problem. We, uh, this X11 support only is for X11. And the Linux uh, package managers for various distros didn't like the, how needed like a, well, it, it needs an X11 dependency. So do you know how dynamic libraries work on Linux? I don't. I just imagine they work the same in anywhere, that they're loaded up and, uh, and I make a call and the call magically goes the right place. <laughs> and I say, thank you, operating system. Yeah. That's how like I imagine. That's a lot of magic. That's how they work. <laughs> I love it if it was that simple. No, what, what it's not really that simple. Is when you're building your project, you have to link to certain libraries. So by adding X11, we link to an X11 library. But the problem is, in order for the program to run, it needs that X11 library always to be there, even if you're not using X X11. Oh, really? And that's a problem because now you have to add that as a dependency wherever you install it, no matter if you're using X11 or not, because a lot of systems now use Wayland. And the issue is you can't dynamically add this library during runtime, depending on whether you want to use X11 or not, because uh, X11 library is ancient and has certain uh, features in it that don't allow dynamic linking in that way. So you can't do, do it during runtime. So we came up with this really funky idea. What if we created a helper library that can be dynamically loaded, that's uh, always bundled with the clipboard project, but that special helper dynamic library, uh, that one can get X11 all day long. Or and not, if it doesn't need it, right? It can choose not to load it too, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so what we do is since this dynamic library uh, because it links to X11, it always needs X11. But if it can't load it at runtime, then it just doesn't run and returns an error. And if we see that error, we know that X11 support doesn't exist on the system. So it allows us to dis distribute the clipboard project just as one package for all systems, X11 and Wayland. Now we had to replicate that helper library also for Wayland. And it, we're if you know C++, you might have heard like C++ magic using templates. And uh, we did do some kind of black magic kind of programming for this helper library because we need to make a generic way to convert, say, a C function in the old stinky library to a pretty C++ function that we can use. And it needs to do that transparently. And so uh, the code looks really ugly. And you have to be like a C++ wizard to understand it. But it does work, and it works great.
That's C++ right there, kids. That's it. That's my summary of C++. And I have no idea what we would do if we were using Rust, which is uh, which uses static linking, and which is incompatible uh, with what we need. Yeah, I looked. I into get that. It wouldn't work. Jackson, I have, a, I have like one last question. You were talking about. I'm still thinking about syncing up to the clipboard, right? I, I think your command line uh, is something to the effect of CB, and then a space, and then the word copy or CB and the words paste. Right, and that's when I want to put something on the clipboard projects clipboard file based clipboard system. But what if I want to grab something that's on the operating systems clipboard or put something on the operating systems clipboard? Is it a different set of commands that I'm using? Oh, no. So going back to my goals for a clipboard project, it should be super easy to use, and because mm -hmm. of that, by default. It just transparently syncs with the system clipboard. So when so I just I set a setting somewhere and I say this inside this uh, uh, session, this command line session, I want it to be in sync, for example. And oh, from no. that point forward, it's in sync. Is that true? By default, it syncs everything. Oh, it does. Yes. Both reads. What what about what about non text formats? Doesn't matter. Like in Windows, for example, you could put something on the clipboard and have like four or five different formats easily for it, right? You have a text-based format, an image format, uh, RTF format. All of those can be all existing at once when something's copied. Do you handle that kind of a situation when different formats are available? Oh, yes. So the system clipboards work pretty well with non-text formats. And for the clipboard project, it's basically trivial because it just copies the files into its little file system folder. It's just getting the blobs or whatever they are. Is that right? Yes. So if I have several things available, it doesn't matter that I have several of them available because, be, in other words, I don't ha ever have to pick which one because when I put it back on the clipboard, it puts all four or five formats that were already, that it took off the first time and puts them all in there. Is that is that correct? Exactly. That's it interesting. Everything transparent. Okay, I like it. Sounds cool. Is this a bi-directional sync or just one way? So uh, at first it was just one way, like writing to, I can't, say, I can't remember if it was just reading or writing to the clipboard because it's a different procedure for each different system, depending on whether you have text or files. But we managed to get, get it bi-directional on all of them. Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. Sweet. It's, that sounds very cool. So I do a screen clip in Windows, and it goes to the, the OS's clipboard. Then your clipboard project can pick that up and convert it into a file and stores it that way? Exactly. So it pick, whenever you invoke it, it determines whether the action you're doing is a read or write action. And if it's a read action, it syncs with the system clipboard uh, grabs the data, figures out what kind of thing it is, and then uh, puts that into the file system. And, you know, just to be clear on this, it's not going to get any data that I copy unless I'm in the command line interface, I tell it to get that data. In other words, if I'm copying passwords and things like that to the clipboard, they're not going to be showing up in some file somewhere, right? So there's a rub to that. So. No, <laughs> there's got to be one answer, Jackson. <laughs> on Windows and Mac OS, you have to invoke it yourself for it to sync over. But on Linux, okay. it does so automatically. Oh, no. Got to be careful over on Linux then. Yeah. Do but, not copy sensitive information, kids. All right. Sorry, Jackson. Go ahead. You wanted to say something else? So what you can do for sensitive information is just set an ignore rule. So if you're passwords follow a certain pattern, you can just make that pattern into a regex, then set CB ignore the regex, and then it'll ignore anything that matches that. Interesting idea. I, I got that idea from a couple other clipboard managers where people said, oh, I don't want to copy my passwords, but they do follow a certain format. So I could, I could use a regex. Can you add that? Nice. It sounds like in the development of this, you did research on kind of competing tools or tools in the same area or genre. 
And it seems like your research was actually including looking at the actual questions and issues that were maybe unanswered by those other tools. Is that true? Exactly. I did market research to find out where these other tools were failing and then just make the clipboard project completely obliterate those issues. Nice idea. I like it. It's also been a blessing and a curse. It's a blessing because uh, I get very few bug reports because everything kind of just works however people want it to because I've done that research. It's also a curse because I have no idea uh, if people are having issues because I get so little engagement on GitHub. Like I, I've only a handful of issues at all. Interesting. Yeah, it's getting so many stars and you've noticed it. So obviously people are looking at it and using it, but there's just very few kind of problems with it. And I just have, it's kind of demotivated me from working on it because. Oh no, it was just I, Christmas too. Sean, it was Christmas. <laughs> it was Christmas, he had a bad day. He was working really hard on some feature. It's over. Well, you were sorry, probably more... sorry, Jackson. You Mark, might have Mark asked... New Christmas, so yeah, he was probably working too. Sorry, Jackson. Go ahead. <laughs> My bad. And I, so just kind of the biggest reason why I haven't done much on it lately is because there's not much more to work on because it does right. all the basic things you could possibly want Clipboard Manager to do. Yeah, and maybe then... it's maybe it's time for a new project, Jackson. What you got? What's your next idea? I was going to go into that, but there is one more feature I want to add. It's okay. undo and redo. And you can kind of see, see that already if you do CB help. And you'll see undo and redo as just kind of placeholder actions because there is a specific way how I want to implement that using the file system. And it would be so easy to do. And it, it would take almost zero space to do almost zero space on the com on whoever uses it. But the problem is it requires a specific feature called copy on write. Now, do you know what copy on write is? I don't think I do. So what copy on write is, is where you uh, can copy a file somewhere else, but no additional data is stored on disk. And what that means is you can copy anything anywhere using zero additional data all instantly. The problem is that uh, you need on Linux, you need ButterFS or XFS file systems, which very few people have, but ButterFS is growing in popularity, but still not the majority. And it's not supported on Windows, and it is supported on Mac OS. So basically, doing this the, the easy, most correct, and fastest way only works on a handful of systems. So I'm just kind of waiting out uh, copy on write support to get more popular before I bother adding it. Copy on write, it sounds a lot like a like a Windows shortcut almost. In it's other words, I've got a, a yeah, I've got a link in one location to a file somewhere else. Symbolic link, yeah. Exactly. So the idea behind copy on write is every time you make you do something with a clipboard, a uh, clipboard project saves uh, a copy of everything before your action and saves it somewhere else. And then it does your action to what's uh, what's the current entry. And then anytime you can just undo that action and go to the previous one using uh, very little disk space, and very little time, but you just need that copy on write feature support. Interesting. And the other ways I found is just going through the code and finding all write operations on the clipboard and then adding a call to some function that kind of marks uh, that as a change. But the problem is I have to go through all the code and mark everything as a change. And that would just be a lot of effort. And I'd have, it would be more effort to add uh, when I add more actions. And so, it might cover everything. Okay, so I want to just be clear on what this undo is. So I've got something on the clipboard. I don't know, or I don't know what it is. And then I use CB paste to put something on the clipboard destroying what was previously on the clipboard, but I never explicitly copied it or added it to my list. Uh, I'm imagining maybe a couple options here. One of them is, is that, no, I think that could work that way. So, okay, so that can exist. Even if I've got the clipboard in sync, if I've got that regex file that says I've copied something like a, a password, 
it's going to ignore that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think you can undo that. If I have a password on the clipboard, it's ignoring it. And then I paste something on it. And now I hit undo. You can't give me the password back. There's no way to get that back, right? Yes. So what uh, copy on write would do is just make it effortless to do only for write actions. Because in the code, there's this little uh, kind of helper function we use to determine if an action mo can modify the clipboard or not. And what we would do is only add a new entry that you can undo to if it's a right ah, action. I see. Interesting idea. Okay, cool. Cool. Exactly. So now I want to go over a couple other projects I'm working on. Well, actually, just one big project. It's called Chata. Do you know, can you guess where I got that name? Japanese. Karate class. <laughs> kind of. It sounds like something from Japanese. But I actually got it from that bachata music that Aventura was all about. Of course. I, heard I, was, I wasn't paying attention. It was that show. It was the <laughs> show. Yeah. So what Chata is, is a programming language meant just for digital signal processing, or DSP. Now, do you know what DSP is? I think it is. Isn't it like basically, it's like all signals that are low level kinds of things that are happening in massive quantities, like audio, video, things like that, right? Where we're taking that and maybe maybe a live signal and making changes to it live. Is that true? Exactly. Is that correct? So oh, things, it is. A lot of things use DSP. So for example, noise canceling headphones, are like all about the DSP and they use yeah. special DSP processors to do everything. And if you have like an EQ on your computer, like say turn up bass, turn down treble, that's e that's DSP too. And what Chata aims to do is have like a single good way to work with DSP because you might not notice already, but DSP uses a lot of C++ or Python or C, a bunch of languages with a bunch of incoherent libraries or uh, maybe vendor specific tools that are like low slash no code. And that is a complete nightmare. So how do we solve this problem? And Chata is here to kind of do that. It's, uh, do you know what risk five is? I don't um, I think you're talking RASC, uh, reduced instruction set computing. B. Uh, so, so what Risk Five is is you know how like normal PCs use like x86, and Apple recently switched to ARM. Yeah, so it's a reduced instruction set. Risk Five is like uh, the the free open source version of that, and that kind of inspired how Chata is going to be, because I love how Risk Five assembly looks, and I want to make something beautiful because Bachata is generally beautiful music. Like, unlike rock and roll, where you have, like, lots of distortion that hurts your ears, they get rid of that. Instead, uh, the, the traditional way you get bachata guitar sound is, like, in 1993, the guitar manufacturer Ibanez from Japan uh, made this pedal called the PT-4. Now, sorry if this is getting real specific, but it's very important. What it did is it integrated a lot of, like, state-of-the-art DSP and it made a very specific sound that's hard to get anywhere else. And that is kind of inspiration for this. Because, hmm, I don't know what to say. It's just kind of like an artistic thing. But from the uh, example Chata code I've written so far, it looks, it looks really nice, like it's clean. I, I really want to make that, make it a shining gem of perfection, but that is pretty hard for a programming language, unlike a clipboard manager, for example. Right. So I haven't been I haven't done much on it so far, but I, I really want to work on it and making something good, just like the clipboard project. Just okay. opinions on perfectionism. I do. I have lots of opinions on that. Like, like it's a whole show. <laughs> I do. Could you summarize those opinions? <laughs> uh, no, but I could maybe grab one out of that whole thing. And that is that, uh, um, yeah, what's the best one out of it? Um, I kind of am all about a relentless pursuit of the truth. 
And so my, for me, truth is essentially the most, uh, the, the optimally, the most optimally efficient path from desire to result. That's truth for me. And so, and, and if we can find that, if we can find that, well, first of all, one of the things that we can do is we can make it provable. It's a provable path, right? In other words, we know that there's nothing more optimally efficient than this uh, because we have metrics on which we're measuring these things, right? You can, I'm sorry, go ahead. I love that because I, another one of my goals for, for uh, Chada is I wanted to have it like formally verified. And that means something like ADA. And if you, if you know what ADA is, it's like a programming language that you can uh, prove to be correct. Yeah, but no, it's, a, it's just not very popular. Sure. Well, it, it, having that ability to prove that that you have got the most efficient way to do something is, I think, powerful. It it, it also, if you're going to glom onto that, well, in order to achieve that, you've got to decide on a metric upon which you will prove you're the most efficient. One might be physical motion. One might be cognitive load. Right. Things like that. How many keys am I pressing? How much am I moving the mouse? How am I moving my uh, my 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 eyes? Where are they looking? Right. You can use different different uh, metrics to measure that path. Right. And I think often the best is a result of many of these metrics. Right. Where you say, OK, I'm going to pick these are my most important metrics. And this is the these are the metrics by which I'm going to measure the success of whatever I'm creating. That is the summary of one of them that's of this idea of pursuit of perfection I and i it. stop right there because we gotta wrap up the show we can't just go talking forever right sean that's right yeah i actually have to jump to another meeting here real soon so oh sorry about that yeah go ahead so if you just want to wrap things up jackson and then we'll move on to picks so i guess uh there's not much for me to say about chata other than it's a little thing i'm working on and I'm trying to make the first implementation of it in something horrible, really slow, like Python. But Python is really easy to develop with. So I think that's like the, a win-win for me. It's like uh, easy to develop to see where we want to go. And then later we can make it fast by rewriting it and say C++, Rust, or Ada. Okay. Nice. Nice. All right. Okay. Do you with want to that, uh, Yeah, we'll move on to picks then. Uh, Mark, you want to go first? I do. I got a great one for you this time, kids. Uh, it's Creator. You know, I'm always looking for good sci-fi. Creator fit the bill. It's really good. Uh, I I want to tell you why, but I can't without like getting close to spoiler on this oh. thing. Spoiler alerts on it. Um, so I'm not even going to go there. But it is really good. Uh, atypical sci-fi writing. Uh, atypical sci-fi or, or movie shooting. They uh, they shot this thing first, edited it. They were on location in a lot of places in Asia, edited it all together, and then did special effects. Normally, you shoot all of your scenes, you do special effects for all the scenes, and then you edit, where you leave millions of dollars worth of, of special effects on the floor. Wow. Right? Something like along those lines. Break the rules. Yeah, they did. They broke the rules, Jackson. Great callback. So uh, Creator is excellent. Um, secondarily, somewhat related, because it's got the word create in it as well, uh, is Procreate uh, for uh, the iPad Pro. Uh, I, this was a Christmas present for Karen. It's a, a drawing tool uh, along with the, uh, the Apple Pencil. So you get those two, you're getting the, the iPad Pro, the Pencil, and Procreate. Those three combos together create this really beautiful drawing, uh, artistic experience. Uh, I know none of these are necessarily brand new, but overall, in my observations, um, the user experience is elegant in this space. We talked about pursuit of the truth. I think they get close to achieving it in the, through the combination of, of these pieces of uh, hardware and software together. Actually, one of my friends uses Procreate at Pixar and he loves it. Cool. Yeah, yeah so there you go. Yeah. Got another testimony. Sean, what, 
What do you got for a pick? You got a pick, Sean? Um, I got a quick pick this this week. Uh, I just started watching it. I mean, it's it's good. It's not the greatest. It's uh, Percy Jackson and the Olympians. Oh yeah, we're watching it. We're so, as a family. It's it's a yeah, good family show. That so it's basically, you know, like rewatching Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief movie that they had out for a while. But you know, it was interesting enough to watch to to go through it and look for the next episodes to come out. So I'm gonna make that my pick this week. All right, cool. Jackson, cool. what do you have for a pick? All right, I got two picks here. First is TV show. And uh, I recently got into wa watching all of Community. And co what Community is, is it's not one of the best sitcoms ever made. It's one of the best TV shows ever made. Like the plots are really funny. It's It's got a lot of details in it, like thoughtful details. And they are really coming close to perfection of say comedy. Actually, if you consider it in within the scope of TV shows, it's one of the best TV shows ever. Sure, I would go of... with that. Yeah, no, I've I've seen almost every episode. I think the uh, the fort, the 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 sleep the pillow sleep, fort, the pillow fort episode, excellent. The one where they're rolling the dice and they go into different alternate dimensions, excellent. Uh, yeah, uh, one of the earlier episodes, I remember laughing with my wife so hard, harder than we've laughed at any TV show, was when uh, they're doing their uh, presentation uh, up at Chevy Chase and uh, I forget the other actor's name. Uh, I want to say his character's name is Jeff or something like that. They're doing their presentation in front of Spanish class and it goes into this montage and one of them's like dressed like a robot at one point in the montage. And I think they're... I they're rowing a canoe, that sort of thing. We thought it was so funny, so well done. Yeah, if you haven't seen it, I'd, I'd recommend it too. It's great. I've got one more pick, and it's for uh, music. And what else is there, Dan? Aventura, We Broke the Rules. It's kind of like uh, the, the exigence behind the clipboard project. Without Aventura, there would be no clipboard project. Okay. Let me just spell that out in the comments. Yeah, okay, put that in the chat and we'll make sure we get a link. Sean, I'm not sure. I think you're muted, but Sean, if you're... Yeah, I got it. Yeah, I found it. Um, so I'll put the link into the show notes. We're good there. Pretty much uh, how it sounds. All right, great. All right. Thanks, Jackson, for coming on the show today and talk about the, the clipboard project. Very oh, interesting. Thank you so much for inviting me. Yeah, hopefully you'll get some uh, some feedback and some uh, users there say, hey, something's not working right, so you have something to do. <laughs> All right. It's so not, I've never actually been on a podcast before, so this is a new experience for me. But it seems like I really like how, how this format works. Yeah, just a low-key, low, no-pressure conversation between, sure. between nerds, geeks, whatever you want to call yourself. <laughs> Right. Mark a little bit of both. <laughs> there's there's something else going on over in this guy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys. I gotta go going. I got other things I gotta jump into. So thanks everybody. And All we'll right. catch everybody else on the next episode of Adventures in.net.